Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we have another ThinkPad, IBM ThinkPad, on the bench. It's an IBM ThinkPad 755C that came out around 1994, I believe, you know, June, July of 1994. Now, this ThinkPad was donated graciously to the channel by Aaron. Aaron, if you're watching, thank you so much. You know who you are. Uh, and uh, this was donated actually a little while ago, and I'm just getting to it now. And it's donated as is. Um, it, he had a booting to the operating system and had a game installed. And uh, I figure for today's video, what we'll do is we'll just do a go over of the system and do a nice little cleanup of the system because, I mean, it is quite, quite filthy, uh, as typical IBM fashion with that coding. And also, um, you know, discover what else is potentially wrong with the system so that we can, in a future video, do a bunch of repair uh, to this computer. So lots to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, so first off, we're just going to do a general overview of the system itself. And, you know, ThinkPad, you take a ThinkPad from 1994, you take a ThinkPad from 2022, uh, and it's crazy the design similarities between each of the systems. And I say crazy, it's just implying that, you know, a company would keep that same style throughout the, or at least nuances from the style throughout all the years. And, you know, ThinkPads are notorious for their quality, for their builds, for their ease of use, their comfort, uh, business applications, you know, consumer markets, depending on what it is. But the ThinkPads uh, themselves have always been uh, definitely a line that will never be forgotten in the computing industry. So let's review the uh, system real quickly. So as I mentioned in the uh, intro of the video, there's this coding and this coding is slightly different. Um, I'm just going to grab the wipe here real quickly just to kind of see, see. Now this coding is definitely rubberized, but look, I mean, just look, <laughs> look at the black. Um, so there's a rubberized kind of uh, coding on it, but it's not your typical um, ThinkPad coding that's on this. It's more, I don't know, more textured than the other stuff would be. The other stuff feels more, I don't know, like a soft coating. So, I mean, I think this would be good just to do a good little scrub around, but you can see the dirt that's just coming off of that, uh, off of that system. I mean, alcohol wipes are the best. I mean, already it feels just better just touching it, but it, it gets kind of sticky over time. This, this coating that they've had on the system. But again, you can see night and day, uh, the difference in the cleanup that we can do to it. So on the front of the machine, we have a clearly marked 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. Uh, you know, Lenovo refer to these as the ultra base. Um, you know, you can swap them out. I imagine you could swap it out for something different in there, whether it be another battery or something. That's my guess on that. But, uh, you know, this particular model does not have a built-in CD-ROM drive. But, uh, but again, uh, the fact that it has that there is amazing and awesome and all those good things. And on this side, you have one of the latches for the screen uh, to be able to open up the screen. You can see it's still quite thick. Um, you know, if you saw my video on the 380XD, um, that's uh, the Pentium version of uh, their ThinkPads. Uh, it, it definitely uh, is, is as thick or, you know, just slightly thicker or thinner. I'm not sure, but, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, a lot of heft to these machines. Uh, but they're built, built very well. And then here we have a PCM CIA expansion capabilities here. We have one card that's missing only because I have it out. Uh, for a uh, another show of something here in a moment and then we have another one that's here and i'm not sure exactly what that card is to be honest with you i'm just going to pop it out here just to see um yeah okay then we have a 14.4 data fax modem so i don't have the dongle for that i'll put it in there just to occupy the bay um better have something in there than not having something in there i suppose and yeah, it's not, uh, there we go. It wasn't playing nice with me there. So uh, yeah, so when we have that, uh, we have that uh, expansion capability here as well, depending on type one, type two, type three. 
And then over here we have the PS2 mouse. Uh, we have a mouse symbol there, but we have the PS2 capability to be able to hook up an external PS2 mouse. Pretty self-explanatory. Back we have ports. Ports, ports, ports. Give me all the ports. And it's just a big port. <laughs> this is a docking bay expansion port. Um, you know, some machines had them on the bottom of the laptops, others on the back. This just happens to be one of those models that have it in the back. So if you look, it has double kind of uh, double hidden tray here. So we have that slider that goes back and forth that you want to you know, plug it into a docking station, then it would, you know, kind of protect all the other ports that are behind here. So you wouldn't have any sort of potential damage uh, that could occur uh, via that. And it's nice to see after all these years, despite the coating coming off and sticky as old heck, that, uh, you know, the, the door itself, the hinges are still good and all that. So it's really nice to see that. So I'm just going to close that up and then we'll look at the actual more ports, ports, ports. So we have the external VGA port here as well, just hooking up external monitor. We have what's what looks like a printer port here as well, par uh, parallel port. Uh, and then we have our um, our serial port there as well. And then over here we have our uh, power cord or power port for the uh, Lenovo adapter. Pretty proprietary by the looks of things, uh, not your standard uh, power uh, connector there. Flip it around again, uh, we have external audio. So you have your microphone and your headset as well, which is nice. And then we have, on top of that, we have our uh, power button there as well. And another latch for the lid. Uh, on the bottom of it, we have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just your regulatory information. I'm so used to ThinkPads having, you know, a docking port of some sort or, uh, you know, some sort of expansion capabilities under here, like a window or a door, a window, a door uh, here that you can open up to, you know, expand memory or touch the hard drive or do something to that effect, or maybe an external battery that you can slide out of here. But none of that exists on this at the moment. And the other thing that's really cool that I like about this is these two little feet here. I mean, when you're using the <laughs> using the machine, you can it's like a keyboard almost where it it tilts the machine towards you for ergonomics. I, I think that's genius. I mean, it's genius for as long as those latches actually hold, because obviously over the years, brittle plastic, as well as, you know, depending on how you use this, it could potentially be snapped off or something to that effect. So again, just having the machine in this condition meaning uh, all the different plastics are all together and all those good things. So again, thanks, Aaron, for sending that my way. And the other thing I'm going to do is before I open up the laptop, I'm just going to show everybody this as well. This is a Lenovo or IBM, I should say, branded um, external CD-ROM drive. So using PCMCIA card, it says IDE PC card connection to this external drive, you have the ability to connect CDs to this or play CDs or access CDs. So I think that's pretty darn awesome to have as uh, part of this setup, because again, you know, depending on what you want to do in terms of installing things or access, just gives you access to a little more media versus just the 1.44 meg card. And that's just example or meg, meg, uh, 1.44 meg floppy drive. And that's just an example of you know, the PCMCIA expansion technology that was around at the time. That was our expansion. That was our USB. That's what we used at the time until USB became uh, more predominant in the market. Okay, let's open this guy up and see what we have on the inside. Okay, let's get all situated here and get all angled here and see all the glory that is uh, ThinkPad and all those good things. Okay, so we have our ThinkPad 755C. And the C, to my understanding, if you had a D on the end, I believe it came with the Ultra Bay with the CD-ROM drive installed as well. And then they had different models over different years. I'm not 100% familiar with all the IBM uh, nomenclature and how they named their uh, systems. It, it all depends on the hardware that was in the system and all those good things. So we have the IBM ThinkPad here uh, logo, which is in just super quality. They, normally, whenever I see these, these are usually worn down, like the IBM colors are worn down or faded, like my 380XD is pretty uh, bad for that. And then we have our brightness control here on the side. Good old fashioned brightness, uh, not, not much in way of contrast or all those good things. But again, 
these pave the way for uh, future. And then we have our beautiful ThinkPad keyboard. I can't say enough about the ThinkPad keyboard. Just love the feedback of it, uh, the feel of it, and all those good things. And if you notice, we have our track uh, track point here, as well as our two mouse buttons, but no track pad of any sort. So there's nothing else to show here. Otherwise, uh, I love that it has the original IBM personal systems need help sticker. Uh, I've seen this on all older systems as well. Uh, just really cool to uh, to see that. So I think what we should do is get this all connected and ready to turn on and see what is on this system. And here we are, cut take. I uh, plugged in the <laughs> plugged in the wire in behind uh, the power connector. It's quite a brick that comes with it, so I just wanted to hide it in behind the system and have it all here. Let's power up the machine. All I did was slide up on the side here, and we'll do a little zoomy zoomy in here and see what's on the screen if we can see it. So yeah, the lighting is just glaring on this system. So we have some beeps, we have some errors, we have all the things we would expect from a system on this channel that uh, just wouldn't work the first time, of course. <laughs> it wouldn't be any fun that way. So error zero, oh, sorry, 1173163. That's very common to a CMOS battery. Uh, needing to be replaced, and I would expect that is the case. Um, you know what I'll do on this video? What we should do is at least take apart the system real quick just to see if we can uh, identify where the battery is and maybe just replace it with one of the CR2032s I have. Uh, yeah, I know that they have different configurations, but we can always make shift something for uh, what we need to do. Okay, so we have errors. That's fine. I'm just going to hit OK on that. I'm acknowledging the fact, and then, sure enough, it comes up with the uh, time. It wants me to set the time, and it will literally complain about this every single time you turn on the system. Some systems will not boot without a proper CMOS battery uh, put in, but hey, uh, this one does. So I'm just going to hit OK and let it bypass that. Now, at the very beginning, I don't know if you noticed it on screen, but it did register as 20 megabytes. Oh, there it is right there. 20 megabytes of memory in this system, which I think is pretty darn cool to have that much memory in the system. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. And we have Windows 95. That doesn't get old at all. I love seeing uh, the Windows 95 startup screen. And just the sound of the original hard drive clicking away in here is just crazy awesome. I didn't mind Windows 95. I mean, I don't know what version's on here, A, B, C, or whatever. But, um, but again, just... Uh, you know, having the Windows 95 and the quality of the screen is not terrible. Being as old as it is, I don't see any dead pixels in it. I'm not seeing any sort of, you know, issues and yeah, okay, we can move the mouse around. That's a good sign. There's a problem with your display settings. The adapter type is incorrect or the current settings do not work with your hardware. So we'll hit okay on that. Um, it wants me to change the display type probably and all those good things. I'm not touching this. I'm just going to escape. I'm not focused today on that. I just want to see uh, what uh, what's on the computer here. Okay. So here we are on to the Windows 95 desktop, and I'm not noticing any sound. So that's probably a driver problem of some sort, and I'm not seeing a uh, sound indicator down here as well, volume control area. So we have a PC card. PCMCIA is obviously installed there. We have a shortcut to Keen 1. <laughs> so we have Commander Keen on here. That's uh, that's something. And I'm going to go into Device Manager just because I want to see what we have on this system for, um, for hardware. And here we are on the Device Manager. So we have uh, under disk drives, we have generic IDE disk type 95. We'll go in in a minute and see how big that uh, hard disk is. And display adapters, it's re reading as a Western Digital 512K of memory. I would have to look up the specs on this machine to see exactly what that is. But the fact that it was complaining about the uh, driver for the hardware that's in this, I would say that that's probably incorrect. And so floppy disk controllers, hard disk controllers, you know, it's pretty standard. You know, Windows 98 or different versions of Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows 98 Second Edition, Windows Millennium, always had these standard controllers, all these standard things installed. So it's just really neat to see over the years uh, what we had with that. So under keyboard, we have our keyboard, uh, standard keyboard, our modem, our 14.4 modem that we detected detected. <laughs> it's detected. Our modem that we took out of the PCM CIA slot earlier. So, I mean, that's the 14.4 uh, 
um, you know, it'd be really cool. I mean, again, I'm one of those crazy people that still have a phone line in the house and I do have an active dial-up connection. Uh, what's the have monitor? Laptop display panel, 640 by 480. Hey, 94. We're going to remember back in 1994, I have another system from Toshiba that I showed on this channel as well with an even smaller screen than this. Uh, color screen and uh, doing that resolution. So it's just, uh, you know, even smaller, sorry. So it's just crazy to see that the technology changed so quickly over the years. Network adapters, we have a dial-up adapter, other devices, unknown device, you know, that's probably Windows 95, just not knowing what's going on here. Uh, you know, for what it is, it's probably your sound card. Everything else looks uh, okay. Our PCM, CIA socket controller, and all the ports. Uh, so we have our COM port, printer port, and yeah, so that's that's what we have uh, for that. So let's click on performance real quickly. And here you'll see your 20 megabytes of RAM that's installed, which is awesome as well. Let's now go under my computer and we'll look at the C drive real quickly here and just see what the capacity is. I know I saw it in the bottom there, but it's good to just show it on the screen. So 327 megabytes formatted. And so it's probably a 340 megabyte hard drive. Uh, that's in this system. So uh, yeah, it's no slouch on that as, as well. So we know it's a 340 megabyte hard drive. We know it's a 1990 Windows and running Windows 95. I'm going to look up the stats on this, uh, the configuration and the specs on this particular model right now. Okay, so I have the uh, specs of this machine. It's a 486 DX250 computer. So it's 486 machine running quite well, may I add. We have Windows 95, it's a uh, 340 megabyte hard drive, so I was right on that. We have a 20 megabyte um, uh, RAM that's installed in this, but that's an expansion. So it's actually a four meg system by spec, but then whoever had this added the 16 megs uh, in some form of configuration. So that's pretty darn good to have 20 megabytes of RAM in the 486 computer. I mean, I can imagine um, getting uh, getting this going and getting uh, playing some stuff on here. And then for the video card, we have a Western Digital video card, yes, but we have a one meg model that's in this. So obviously there's a driver problem we have to take a look at. And then we also have a CS4248 audio. So whatever that is in terms of that. Uh, so I'd have to go and get the drivers from Lenovo's website and we'll get that all configured. The reason I'm not doing that right now is because I want to fix that CMOS battery, as I said I would, and I want to do an external, internal cleanup of the system and get it kind of feeling really good. And then in the future, we can, you know, do something with the operating system, get it all configured correctly. You know, Windows 95 would be obviously a good candidate to uh, reinstall on this computer. So all that said, let's get this computer shut down. I'm not interested in going through all the um, software and all that stuff that's installed on the computer. I mean, just pretty basic stuff anyway, but I don't know if there's any PII on this stuff or not on this computer, so I'm not going to uh, poke around too much, especially where it was donated and there's a layer of trust there as well. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the computer, done. And uh, we'll get this computer powered down and we'll see if we can take apart this computer and see what, uh, yeah, just see what we're gonna find in this system. So first we're gonna do is just unplug the power cord from the back there. And my understanding from the 755, let me just turn the light back on here a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I mean, we have, my understanding is that the keyboard just flips up on this model. So I believe on the side here where there's those two kind of uh, latches for the monitor, if you pull them even closer to you, you kind of feel like a secondary click. And yeah, there we go. So there's our keyboard lifting up, no problem. I'm hearing little cracking noises, so I'm just being careful with it getting it situated in such a way that I can actually work on it. So, okay, we have it up. It's not falling. It's good news. What do we have in here? Oh, I just love looking at all these old systems. Let's zoom in here. Let's give everyone a really good look of what, uh, what we have in this computer. So it looks like we have the 340 megabyte hard drive here. It's just capacity 340 megs. So, and it's IBM. So it's original to the machine, at least I would think. Uh, and well, I would say yes, actually, because the specs actually called and said, called for and said it's a 340 megabyte hard drive. And then we have all our other components here. I can see the little cable over here uh, feeding the uh, keyboard. So I'm gonna stay away from that guy. Uh, not interested in getting all these um, all this uh, kind of looked after 
and having to work on all that. We have the battery here, what looks like to be the original battery as well. It's a 9.6 volt, 3.3 amp um, nickel hydride battery. I'm not feeling any bulging in this at all. It's completely flat. Um, it's interesting how it's an internal battery, for sure. I mean, you can just pop it out like that. I mean, there's nothing, nothing fancy there. But I would be interested in seeing if I can find a replacement uh, battery for this. So I will definitely be looking uh, for one of those as I look around. Okay, we have that guy back in there. And then this, I believe, is our floppy drive. And I believe just to remove this, uh, you just kind of pull up on these little tabs, pull on this little lever. Yeah, there we go. And we have our floppy drive from IBM. Date 1994, 38th week. So yeah, it's a 1994 system so far. So that's looking pretty good and tells you what not to do with the, uh, with the system. Uh, it looks like this is just a mount that goes on here. And yeah, it has some proprietary stuff to be able to connect. First time seeing this, guys. So uh, just take a little extra long to look at it. So there we go. There's the uh, DRAM card, <laughs> uh, 16 megabytes. So as I mentioned earlier, this model came with a four megabyte uh, RAM as part of the specs. And so it looks like a memory card is inserted, the 16 megabyte here. So I'm just going to pull that out. It says pull here from computer. No problem. I'll do that. I just pull straight out. There's no need to, um, you know, don't force anything, guys, when you're doing this stuff. Or, you know, try not to take it out sideways like this because you don't want to bend any of those pins that are in there. I mean, everything's looking pretty fairly clean there. So that's good news. Let's go put this aside. And then we're exposing some more stuff in here. So we have a battery here. Not sure what that battery does, to be honest with you. So if you can tell me in the comments down below, I'm going to remove that screw. And yeah, there we go. And it should hopefully expose by the looks of things. Yeah, there we go. Just a little cover. Okay. And this is more what I was expecting to see. It looks like we have a battery right here, and that, my understanding, is the CMOS battery right here. Over here, again, I, I don't know what this battery is. I don't know what it does, um, but any batteries are prone to leaking. So, I mean, I know the irony in what I'm saying here because of leaving this in, but again, I usually look for anything that's bulging or anything like that, especially for um, more of like battery, like laptop batteries that power the main system. I'm not worried about that too much, but you know, when it comes to these little guys, you know, it looks, it feels like there's coin cells that are all kind of put together in some sort of fashion, uh, you know, less chance of leaking, but Hey, um, I'm going to remove it anyway. And if it's not needed, then, uh, you know, it'll complain and tell me something else if, if it is needed. Okay. Let's pull out this here. This looks like a plastic guard of some sort. I'm just going to see if I can move it out somehow without breaking anything. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't no idea what this is either, uh, other than just maybe a guard or something that this, you know, kind of holds the, you know what, that's probably what that is. It probably came with that. At least I think it is. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments, but, um, it's possible that cause it looks like it's perfectly grooved for this. So it may have come with this just to be able to insert it into here, or it was in the system as part of the ThinkPad. And this was just an addition that helps guide that along to where it needs to go. So put that aside as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take out this unknown battery. So I'm just making note of where things are plugged in. Um, I am seeing under here though, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I'll see if I can do this. Um, there's a third over here. There's a third um, kind of battery um, connector here, very similar to these other two. So I don't know what that does. I'd have to look at the, um, you know, the, the schematics to look at that. But I'm going to keep this out of the system until, you know, you saw how easy it was to kind of remove this. So again, I'm going to remove this from the system. But if anyone knows on the channel uh, what this is used for, please let me know. Happy to uh, replace it with a brand new one if it's required. Okay, I'm going to pop this guy out. This is our CMOS battery. And there we are. So our happy go lucky CMOS battery. Now, um, I don't know. This is a, it says a VL 2020 is what's in here. But I mean, again, these are pretty proprietary in the sense that, you know, you go and you buy them already pre-made like this. 
Um, I, I don't have anything like this. Now, I've done a couple of replacements of CMOS batteries over the years, and there's different things that you can do. I mean, I can, A, go on Amazon, probably find one of these, two of these, ten of these, whatever. I don't need them all. Get them, order one, pop it in, you know, Bob's your uncle, life goes on. Or I can strip this away, remove these leads from the battery, put new leads, uh, put a new battery in here, just, you know, the three volt, um, 2032 pop it in there and that would work just as well as well. Another alternative is, and I don't know if I'll be doing this now that I just talked about my first option, is putting a coin cell battery holder in, uh, soldering the two leads that are there and folding back the edges, put some uh, cap, oh, geez, look at that. I just had the uh, negative, uh, we won't be using this one anyway, but, um, but folding back those two edges and put some Kapton tape there and putting it you know, I could theoretically, if it's flat enough, put it in there, but I'm concerned about the height. You know, we're talking that's laying inside the system. And then we're talking about introducing that height to it. So I'm probably going to work on this just to see if I can remove that tape, expose the battery and expose the leads and just see what we're getting into. I, I don't know if there's a resistor in here or anything like that. So I'll definitely take a look at that as I go. But the intent here would be then to replace it with a 2032 battery, put it in here, flatten it in, and do that. So I'm going to move the laptop aside here, start working on this just to see what we have, and potentially just replace this together. Okay, and we're back. I just moved the system over to the other side there. And in case anyone's screaming at the screen, I know that this fell inside that laptop, so I do have that out of the system so we don't have to worry about any short and i'm going to take that right away and toss it in the garbage just so we don't have any risk of using it in the future system so i have my scalpel here i have poked myself with this before it is not fun at all but uh but yeah so i know it's a panasonic vl 2020 is the battery on this and i'm just going to split this down a little bit here so we have a better view um so if i do need to replace or get a replacement for this i can certainly uh, certainly do that so i'm just removing the sticker from this real quickly and just doing a little score on this just to see if we can expose what is under here in terms of the battery um you know just that's what these are that's all they are i've done this with another lenovo before another uh, thinkpad and it's literally just yeah there we go this is just a protective coating on it um to protect it from shorting out on the system and again if you do this this is on you <laughs> i uh i do this myself just because i'm confident with what i'm doing uh, if you decide to do this and it doesn't work for you um you know, that's on, on yourself, of course. Uh, I recommend you get all factory parts, replacements, all those good things, um, and do what is best for your situation. Okay. Um, yeah, and I've learned my lesson before. You know, as, as sharp as these are and as painful as they are when they get you in the fingers, um, it's best to have a really, really, really sharp knife for these things. We're starting to expose what we need to see here. I'm just going to get the last bit out here. And we will. I don't want to cut the wire. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So as you can see, all it was is a protective layer. There's nothing fancy about that. And then the battery, as you can see, is housed within this. So it looks like there's two leads that are on here. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from removing the leads, putting a putting them on the battery, and then just uh, you know, Kapton taping it, sealing it up, making it all nice and clean, and then putting it inside the system, and even putting a layer on it as well, just so it you know kind of stays put. But I mean, we do have this caddy here that holds it down in place again there's not a lot of room there there's very little depth that's in there it looks actually less than it looks like on camera and then ultimately it holds it in place anyway so i think we're in good shape there let me go get a 32 battery 2032 battery here we are with our brand new maxell 2032 battery i just realized while i was getting this that i'm running low on these little guys amazon it was like a 30 pack or something like that for a few bucks <laughs> it's just crazy and they're good quality. So the positive side is here, and it's three volt. I mean, it's still three volt. Uh, should be fine. Yeah, it's just the size difference, right? But um, we're good there. So positive is on top. That's the red. Negative is on the bottom, and that's going to be the black. So um, there we go. Uh, there's your lesson for the day. 
So we have the leads removed from the battery, and it looks like there's like little, I don't know, pivot points or weld points to the metal. I'm not sure of the battery. Either way, no issues removed, all good. And then I just took the leads and just kind of folded them over and um, stamped them just to, you know, flatten them and all that. And again, to anybody who's saying, what are you doing? And, you know, can't believe you're doing this <laughs> uh, versus just ordering online. I mean, this will serve the purpose. It will do exactly what we need it to do. So we have uh, the kept on tape here. So I'm just going to take some of that and get that, uh, get that all set up here. And there we are. And this is really DIY. I mean, like I said, there's, there's different ways, different things you can do. And that's literally it. I, I've done this so many times with different laptops and, you know, some of them from many years ago and others from recent. And there hasn't been any issues whatsoever with, um, with the uh, system afterwards. So all good to go. And there's our battery and that's not going anywhere. Okay, good. Now, let's put a cover on this as quickly as I can. <laughs> Again, I don't. I already stabbed myself once with this already, and not today, obviously, but I have. And my goodness, it took forever to heal. Um, it was pretty deep. I'm going to clean up the desk here a little bit. There we go. And we'll move our machine back into view. All the cutscene stuff I normally do, but uh, hey, you guys can see a little bit of it. Okay, we're here and we'll open this back up and see if we can get this installed again. So if you remember, this was installed in the um, middle of the system and I'm just making sure it's gonna go in the right way. There's a certain way you put this in and I'm just taking a peek to make sure that it's gonna go, okay, that's the way it is. Positive is on the left. So we'll put that in. I know you can't see too much there, I'm sorry. I just gotta, there we go. I'll use my flathead screwdriver just to make sure it goes in there nice and tightly. There we are. Okay. And you can see that it just fits in there nicely as it should because that's what, you know, the original wire that was in there. And then we have our battery there with our leads on it. And we'll screw that in. There we are. We have that in place now minus the battery that was there before. And we will take our plastic guide, that's all I can call it, because I have no else idea what it is, and we'll pop that in. I believe there's two little grooves there that it slides into. There we go. Okay, perfect. And that's on there, and then it kind of just locks in place there, so that's where it is. And I'm going to be very careful putting our memory card in. Having 20 megabytes of memory in the system is an absolute bonus. So I'm just taking my thumbs on both edges of the card and just sliding it in. Kind of feeling the friction and yeah there's definitely guide rails there guys like in that plastic so that is definitely meant for this okay and we have that in and we'll pop our floppy drive in here now and i'm just putting it in reverse of what we had it before and i believe that's it and we'll take our little groove thing here a little latch and pop it underneath where it was before there Okay, we have that in there, that in there, our batteries in there, our new batteries in there, and of course the computer will complain when we first turn it on, we'll set the date and time, and cross our fingers that that's all we need to do for the replacement today. And to put it back down, uh, back in place, is just slowly putting it down. Remember, we're dealing with old components here, and I'm not forcing anything, I'm just going to kind of, see I'm just releasing the latches here, slightly. And you'll see that it just kind of pops into place. There, hear that? That was satisfying. Nice and clicky. And everything's back together. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's get our system fired back up now. It's going to complain. Always does. It says 173 at the top now. 163. Error. Yeah, we know it would. Okay, um, move that up. I think it's just the mouse here. There we go. Uh, we'll go 2023. It is June. Oh, not July, June. And it's some date. 
Uh, it is the 15th. Okay. And our hour. You guys don't need to be bored with all this, but uh, hey, thanks for sticking around with me on the journey. We'll hit OK. Set the time. And we'll let the computer boot up. And then we'll shut it back down. We'll unplug the battery. And we'll make sure that it saves it and doesn't complain anymore. So it's not complaining this time. But it could be because, again, the power and the battery uh, through the power of the, the wall. So I just want to make sure um, that uh, what we've done is working. Windows 95 splash screen is back. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. Um, I know I mentioned this a few times on the video, in the video, I should say. Uh, again, if you know what it is, I'd really appreciate everybody kind of going, yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but uh, if anything, if it's not required, I'm a stickler for putting stuff back to what it should be as original when I go to restore machines. I will get it if I have to. Um, but again, all good. New clock settings. That's good news. We've updated the clock. Daylight savings is detecting the date and the time and problem with the display driver, which everyone knows we experienced that earlier. We'll hit escape. I don't know why I'm still holding that battery. Okay, we're back into Windows. And I'm going to just shut down the computer because uh, I want to make sure what we did worked. So the computer's turned off. Let's unplug the power from the back here. As you can see, no tricks. And I'll uh, make sure that I just hold down the power button. It's always good to do that for a few uh, seconds just to discharge any caps um, as well, uh, just to be absolutely sure we are not uh, not holding on to any charge. And we'll pop in this power adapter back in and see if it saved the settings for us. And there we are. Saving the settings. It's awesome. So no errors, no 176, no all those things. It's just right into Windows. Ah, another success. Awesome. Love that. And again, please let me know. Let me appreciate it. Uh, what that battery is for. So I think the next step now, uh, we've gone quite a while on this video, more so than I had uh, anticipated. So I think... Uh, you know, this was a very good overview of the ThinkPad 755C in terms of just, you know, looking over the actual system, taking a look at uh, the different components and things like that that are part of this system, knowing what it is truly being a 486. Again, our wonderful display settings. We're well aware, computer, we'll fix you another time. Uh, but uh, yeah, just exploring and seeing what was on this computer in terms of uh, just the hardware. And, you know, we have a functional operating system here, but I definitely want to do something differently with this machine. Get it all scrubbed up, get it all cleaned up. You saw all the dirt that came off on those wipes. Uh, and we definitely know this needs some TLC. And also uh, replacing that uh, pesky CMOS battery. And you saw how quickly I just did a modification just using the leads and capped on tape and protected it and it's clean. It's hiding away down there. Absolutely no chance of a short and it's securely tucked in under that, uh, that uh, kind of raceway for the wiring and everything under there, uh, which is really cool component of this system. So I think in another video, what we'll do is we'll do a complete cleanup of the system, get everything kind of looking, feeling really clean and good and getting the operating system completely reinstalled on this system and getting all the drivers installed and getting it working and maybe playing a couple games. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. Make sure you select it to all. Uh, I had some people comment that they weren't getting notifications about this video. If you change it to all, it will let you know about anything I do in terms of content, community posts, etc. And of course, please leave a comment below if you know what the battery is over there. Or, uh, you know, maybe you didn't like what I did with the battery. That's fine. <laughs> I just, again, love all my comments. Love responding to absolutely everybody who com uh, comments on the channel. Again, I really love the interaction. And most of all, I love having everybody here spending time with me doing this. And thank you so much for helping make this channel grow. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.